Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana's channel, my name is Shanks and before we gonna jump into today's video which is gonna be a video commentary for Battle for Middle Earth 2 on the patch 1.09 version 2.0, I would like to remind you that we have a tournament coming up very soon for Rise of the Witch King, it's gonna be a good against evil tournament in which every player is signing up with two factions, one evil, one good, that means every single game you're gonna be able to see is gonna be good against evil and you know me, those El Clasico matchups, I like them the most. And every single game will also be broadcasted on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. Follow me there if you haven't done it yet, because I would love to meet you guys in the next live stream. Anyways, before further ado, let's get it started. On the right side of the map, we have the green Dwarven player best enemy, and on the left side, the yellow Isengard player Archangel, who is also one of the Battle for Middle Earth 2 expert players. So he knows everything about this game, guys. And he's, all, he's also a very active player. He's gonna start with two furnaces and he's actually using his cave pads already to scout the area of his opponent's best enemy. Let's see if this name suits this guy really well because, you know, best enemy, you gotta be the best to actually name yourself like that. <laughs> Anyways, two mineshafts are coming up for the Dwarven player into the Hall of Warriors, which is the barracks for the Dwarven faction. On the other side, we see two furnaces coming up for Archangel the Isengard's player into the Uruk pit. Urukai are a little bit uh, different in BFME 2 in compared to Rise of the Witch King, at least their cost. They cost less in BFME 2. Remember in Rise of the Witch King they used to cost, or they, are, they cost actually, not used to, they still do, uh, 400 uh, resources each. Unlike in BFME 2, here they cost only 300 resources. So they are way cheaper actually, 100 resource difference is huge. Alright. The Kribane was able to see this one, but the Dwarven player is gonna cancel or abort this mineshaft now, which is smart. This way the Isengard player won't know that, you know, he will expect that there will be a mineshaft, but that's not gonna be the case. On the other side, we're gonna get some Guardians on the field. And Isengard player is recruiting some Urukai. Urukai are potentially a little bit stronger in a 1v1 situation than those Guardians, but we shall see. The Builders, they will be able to see each other. And the Isengard builder is actually moving downside. The other builder is actually scouting the area in the middle, and the reason why he's doing that is he's looking to scout the enemy mineshafts. That's very important against dwarves early on. Because if you don't do that, and the dwarven player might go for a sneaky attack, it's gonna be very difficult for you to defend. The mineshaft is coming up around this side. The Urukai are looking for potential mineshafts, and they will be actually able to see this mineshaft right there. On the other side, the builder is still looking for the possible mineshafts, but he won't be able to find any. So, um, but I think Archangel was able to see the builder from best enemy. That's why he can, or he has to expect now an attack from the Guardians with the Rallying Coal. Rallying Coal in BFME 2 doesn't give you armor, but it gives you damage. Just like in Rise of the Witch King and also combat experience, unlike in Rise of the Witch King. Alright, so the no armor actually makes those Guardians still very vulnerable, they are dying quite fast against the arrows from the fortress, also using the aggressive stance for whatever reason, they shouldn't do that in my opinion. They're gonna take a fight against the Urukai, but they are quite tanky with the shield wall formation and the whole crown sense combination, and the fortress is being super helpful. The mineshaft, or the furnace in this case, sorry, has been demolished, which is smart, this way uh, you won't give up any power points or experience points to the enemy units. You can see that yourself, those Guardians are still only level 1, they couldn't get any experience just yet. Cave pads is gonna be used from the Isengard's player Archangel to debuff the enemy units. And cave pads in BFME 2 is way more powerful than in Rise of the Witch King. Because unlike in Rise of the Witch King, and the cave pads in BFME 2 are not only nullifying the enemy leadership, no, they are also nullifying the enemy buff. It means the Riding Call is gonna be completely nullified. And on top of that, they still lose damage and armor. So dealing with these units now is gonna be way way easier for the Isengard's player Archangel. And he will also be able to keep this Uruk Pit alive. But now look at this, how many units he has on the field. One, two, one of them is level two. Three battalions of Urukai guys. Kribin is still active, it's a bad fight to take for the Dwarven player, even on the whole ground stance. A shield wall formation plus the aggressive stance by the way from the Urukai. And the Guardians, I mean the reason why he's not running away is simple, because the Urukai are faster, so if you are not gonna be able to get away, it's just better to stay and fight. Because running away against Urukai is 
Guardians from the Dwarven faction is not gonna be a possible option. Mineshaft here is gonna be taken down next. And this Mineshaft has been taken down as well. But the Urukai were damaged during all this time and they have to disengage now. On the other side, we have still no transition into the battle wagons just yet. He actually keeps spamming those Guardians all the time. And power point wise, after the first fight, we have 350 command points available for best enemy, the Dwarven player. 3 power points collected. On the other side, 450 command points available for Archangel. And he has nearly 4 power points collected. And he has 1 level 2 Urukai, 1 level 2 here. He has to be careful though. It would be kinda nice if you can save this level 2 units. Because they will have to sustain, which normally evil faction doesn't have. Unlike the good factions, you know, which can always build a well and sustain even when they are level 1. On the other side, you know, the evil factions, they have to kind of save the level 2 units because they will be respawning over time automatically. Even though I'm not sure, I am assuming there is something like an upgrade on the Isengard Fortress which is going to enable something like a heal. I am not sure yet. So let me know in the comment section below guys if you know something about it. If a work pet actually offensively at the <laughs> at the other side of the map from Archangel for the work riders which is smart. Because right now the best enemy uh, from you know the Dwarven player on the right side has almost exclusively guardians on the field. And they're gonna be very vulnerable against the trample damage from those work riders. And also the whole ability is different. Uh, whole ability uh, is gonna give you 55% increased damage through but you lose, you know, 10% armor against pikes and structural damage. That means, for example, the fortress arrow or every building which is level 3 is gonna deal to you 10% more damage if you are using the whole ability. But on the bright side, you're gonna have 55% increased damage. And I think that's a nice trait because what you can always do is after using whole ability, you can always switch to the whole crown stance. That's gonna make it kinda even again. You don't lose really armor, but you still have more DPS. Because 55% is actually quite nice. Alright, the mineshaft has been taken down. But look at this now, guys. There are no pikemen and the trample is incoming. Holy guacamole. There we go. Oh, he's gonna use the rallying call now. But a little bit too late, I'm assuming. 8 power points. He's gonna use the Kribane, which is gonna debuff the enemy units. Nullify the rallying call completely, by the way. And what a great defense here from the Isengard player Archangel. During all this time, he's also creeping the work lane at the top left side. And the power points are rising to the sky. The furnace here is gonna get demolished and that's very important. I like the way that Isengard's player is always demolishing his structures before his opponent is able to take them down. Which is gonna give him not only experience points to the units, but also power points from the spellbook. And I don't need to explain you guys how impactful those two stats are uh, for the interest of the game. We have also Gloin on the field guys, the first hero in this game. Isengard's player was also recruiting lords, I take it back. So we have lords, I mean, for each side we have a hero now. Blind for dwarves and lords for Isengard. Lords is quite nice. I would like to lord, I would like to call lords a, a anti-hero, guys, because of the cripple ability. Blind on the other side is a siege machine for sure with the Shake Foundation slam and then the Shatterhammer once he's level 10. Can actually change the outcome of the game easily. Is gonna be able to creep this troll layer at the top right side. And so far, uh, I mean, right now the players are actually focusing more on, on expanding and on creeping and getting more power points slash resources. And I'm assuming we're gonna see a big fight coming very, very soon. So we have actually double hall of warriors, still no transition into the battle wagons. Lords is drawing the sword, he's almost level 2. Level 2 is gonna unlock the carnage, by the way, which means 100% increased damage and 20% increased armor for Lords. It's a bad fight to take after all, like, you, you want you want a chief to match with one half that battalion of Urukai. Lord is level 2 now though, he can use Carnage. There we go, he is now glowing red. And that's gonna make him actually one shot everything around this area. But he's taking a lot of damage, he's gonna try to commit against the mineshaft, but he is surrounded. And Gloin is gonna use Slam Shot and knock him back. He's trying hardest, but Rebuild is gonna save the day and Lord's Carnage is off now. He's gonna try to run away. And actually, he should be able to get away because, again, the Dwarven units and even heroes are very slow in compared to every other hero or unit in the game. I don't see the Dwarven player best enemy being able to catch Lords any soon. I mean, on the bright side, he was forcing his opponent to use Rebuild defensively. Rallying Call is going to be used. I think Kribin is going to be available very soon as well. 
Leon is now level 4, Shake Foundation is available guys, the Mineshaft has been taken down, there are a lot of uh, Urukai on the field actually. Slam is still on cooldown. Isengard's player is dominating the map control fight so far, he's actually out spamming the Dwarven player big time. And imagine if there would be a battle bug on the field in those kind of situations, because Isengard's player has like zero pikemen on the field right now guys. And the Mineshaft is going down, look at the minimap at the bottom left side of your screen. Like Isengard's player is being able to take down the mineshafts left and right and denying so many power points, I mean so many command points and resources uh, from his opponent's best enemy. Maybe Archangel is the true best enemy in this game, who knows? Uh, 600 command points for Isengard's player, he was also using Industry by the way. Before, I don't see where he was, I can't see any furnaces glowing so far. On the other side, we have 450 command points only for the Dwarven player best enemy and his command points kept right now. Mineshaft level 2 is gonna be potentially taken down, yeah it's gonna go definitely down. Oh the slam though, the slam though, but it's just too late and too little and the mineshaft has been taken down regardless. Level 5 Urukai, it would be nice if you can save them. But you need to make sure to use the line formation which is gonna increase your movement speed. And that's gonna be also the case now. And again, look at the movement speed from the Urukai in compared to the Guardians or the, you know, Dwarven Pikeman units. And he will be able to save both the units which is huge by the way. On the other side, we have the White Wizard of Isengard joining the battlefield, guys. The Saruman, the traitor of Middle Earth. <laughs> one in a throw like a madman. I think he can easily take him down on a one on one. Look at this. The show match. Saruman, the mighty wizard from uh, Middle Earth, from Isengard, against the mighty cave troll, protecting his homeland, the, the cave. But we have no chance against the White Wizard. And yeah, you can level up those heroes very very quickly until they hit level 4. Uh, he should try to give the last hit to Saruman because level 2 is gonna unlock his fireball. But look at this massive attack now guys. Hobbit ally is summoned. Uh, Rallying Call is available by the way for the Dwarven player, he's not using it because Kribin is active. There is no point of using Rallying Call if the Kribin is active again because it's gonna nullify your buff anyway. So you can always or you should always wait until the debuff is gone then you can use it later on. It would be an absolute waste right now to use it. Alright, that's the furnace with the industry on it. I was not able to see it before. And if the... But, you know, best enemy, the Dwarven player is also not able to see that, unfortunately. One of the Uruk pits has been taken down, but that one is level 3. Level 3 has 6000 HP. But even this, you can see that yourself, right? The buildings in BFME 2... I mean, if this would be in Rise of the Witch King, a level 3 Uruk pit, you needed to get like 5 siege weapons in order to take it down. Like in BFME 2. And Isengard's play lost actually everything around this area. What a beautiful attack. Taruman going for a beautiful uh, fireball. Wizard Plus is gonna be almost pick up. Hobbits are doing a great job, but Saruman has to be careful. We have also Warm Tongue on the field. Lourdes is now level 4, which unlocks the cripple ability. Okay, that, that's the Wizard Plus, by the way. Uh, you can, when you you know use the bow instead of the sword, you can always use the cripple to cripple down the enemy heroes. Like in this case, for example, Gloin. Even though I can't see Gloin on the field. Maybe Gloin has been taken down, I'm not sure yet. Level 5 pikemen from the Dwarven player best enemy, but they won't be able to survive. Because the Isengard heroes are just faster. They will be able to catch them, no big deal. I mean, on the bright side, the Dwarven player best enemy was untouched now. Uh, because of the attack. And he was also able to expand during all this time. Look at the mineshaft at the bottom side. He's building multiple mineshafts, he has now 675 command points against 250 command points only from Archangel. And he was ahead like a minute ago. Like this game can be changed in a second. No furnaces by the way, as you know, 200, 200 command points is the least amount you can have. But luckily he has still some money in the bank. Because he was using Devastation, which is gonna give you instantly resources. And he has to make sure to expand and to make some units now. Luckily he was able to save the level 5 Urukai. And he has also very impactful heroes on the field as, for example, Saruman, Wormtongue, uh, with the debuff now available, and also Lords, who is almost, like, uh, he was already level 5 and unlocks the leadership. Which is a damage leadership, 50% increased damage and 25% increased combat, combat experience. Yeah. Alright, Ward of Power. He has also a Ward of Power, and just like Gunsalf. Uh, but he has not the um, lightning strike, unlike in Rise of the Witch King. You can see there are differences actually in between the existing heroes in both games. And I like this actually for Saruman, unlike in BFME 1, in which he doesn't have any level 10 ability. 
I like, I think like when you get a hero to level 10 to level 10, you should also get rewarded for that. And in this case, you have a ward half power just like Gandalf, which is quite nice. 450 command points available for the Isengard player. And 775 command points available for the Dwarven player best enemy, guys. Loin is back in the business and he's level 6. But Cripple is available for Lords, keep, it, keep that in mind. That's the Cripple, by the way. Oh, what a beautiful Wizard Plus once again. That's the debuff from uh, Wong Tsang, which, by the way, enemy hordes and heroes in the target location suffer minus 40% speed, minus 50% rate of fire, which is attack speed, by the way, so they attack really slow and uh, last for 19 seconds. That's actually a crazy debuff, dude. What the heck? That's also different from Rise of the Witch King. I like it. I mean, Gloin is very, very tanky. And he has also a lot of units in the backup. He was using the Man of Tail summon for that. Lord has to be careful. There is no reason of taking a fight in this kind of situations. Because he was forcing your opponent already to use uh, 15 power points for a, for a defensive summon. And unlike in Rise of the Witch King, the Man of Tail from the summon here... They don't have fighter upgrades. Remember in Rise of the Witch King, if you summon Men of the Hill, they are coming with fighter upgrade purchased. So also a difference between AFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King in terms of this summon. Level 6 Gloin, Shake Foundation Slam ability available. Gloin is one of the few heroes that is pretty much the same like in Rise of the Witch King. Just like Lourdes, I guess. Even though the leadership is different. Uh, Isengard is getting back into the game. He's actually building a wall up around this side, just why not? Yes, the Caribbean upgrade on the fortress, which is going to give us uh, give him a lot of vision control. Look how much, how much he's able to see, guys. Because of the upgrade on the fortress, he actually sees almost the entire half of the map, which is impressive. And there is still nothing, there is still nothing like uh, battle wagons on the field, guys. Double Hall of Warriors level three. We are not able to recruit uh, zealots here, unlike in Rise of the Witch King. The only units you are able to recruit in BFME 2 are guardians or pikemen. Alright, the man shot at the bottom left side is being taken down from the Isengard player. But look at this, guys. He has units everywhere. The men of Dale, they're pretty much gone. And Isengard player is making the right choice and actually running behind the fortress because he doesn't need to fight against them since they're gonna be gone anyway very soon. And we have also Gimli on the field, guys. Son of Gloin to support his daddy next to the ducks. <laughs> I like those kind of designs on these maps. Even though they are so small, you have to literally zoom in to see them properly, but still, you know. Alright, Gloin has been crippled down once again. Shake Foundation was used before. The debuff from Warm Tongue is being available once again and being used immediately. Wizard Plus has been used. Uh, even knocks back a really fat Hobbit. I mean, not Hobbit, but Dwarf, Gloin, who is now released from the spell. Saruman is able to knock the enemy's enemy heroes down, just like uh, Boromir. Look at this. How can you move against that? Like, you can. Saruman doesn't joke, guys. Saruman doesn't joke, heal is being used, but can you get away from this situation though? You can't potentially, right? Because you are very, very slow. Lourdes is throwing the sword, going inside the jeans. Wormtong is also in the backside for, with the backstab available very soon. Level 6 is going to be needed for that. And they are able to share experience. Uh, Lourdes is level 6 now, level 8 I believe. And level 7 is going to unlock the pillage ability. We're going to have Hobbit allies summon once again. The heroes from Isengard are still alive. And Fireball is gonna be available as well as Wizard Plus now from Saruman. He has to make sure to save to Urukpit if he can. We might see a Wizard Plus or Fireball here. Wizard Plus is gonna be used, not the best one. He should be trying to get closer to the enemy units in order to hit them, hit multiple of the units at the same time. And the Warcry Riders are gonna go for a trample. That's gonna be enough to save the day at least for now. I mean, the Urukpit is protected in those kind of situations. It's very, very important for the Isengard's player to keep the productions, production buildings alive. And obviously, uh, best enemy, the Dwarven player now has to invest the money again into getting his uh, Gloin back in the back on the field. Because Gloin is pretty much level 7 now, is only 3 levels away for, you know, for unlocking the Shatterhammer, which can pretty much change the outcome of the game. It's like an earthquake. Deals massive damage in a, in a big area. I mean, the, the Isengard heroes are very impactful, guys. Aramon is level 5, level 8. Is, oh, the Watcher is coming in clutch, though. One of the best defensive abilities definitely in the game, which can, you know, take down the entire army all, all alone pretty much. Uh, Gimli is level 4, level 5 is gonna unlock the Slayer, which is gonna make him like a hero killing machine. 
He will get a lot of movement speed damage, uh, but only loses a couple of armor and has 80% chance to knock back heroes. And that's quick math. Like every like 8 out of 10 attacks is going to be able to knock back the enemy heroes, which is impressive. And if you're lucky, you can knock them back all the time. Okay, the debuff is being used once again from Wormtongue. I like this debuff actually, guys. Escape is level 3. Unlike in Rise of the Witch King, in which it's, it is... Oh, 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 oh. Go for a beautiful Visa Plus. Oh my god, that was the perfect timing, dude. Come on, do it, do it, do it. Zaramon. Oh, he's trying to kill King Zane, though. King Zane is very powerful, but again, very slow. Beautiful, uh, beautiful, war not Wormtongue. Beautiful uh, Visa Plus there from Saruman. King Zane, can he get away? I don't think so. Oh, but the, you know, the spoil hero Gimli is jumping in like a, like a, uh, superhero. <laughs> what a game. Heal is being used, but again, the Dwarven heroes are so immobile, you know, that's, again, running away is not an option here. Oh, but they are gonna feed Saruman even more. Saruman is almost level 6. Wormtongue is almost level 4. Gimli is left alone in between the Urukai. Oh, the extra from Gimli was not enough to deal the damage he's looking for. Saruman will be able to get away. Fireball is being used. There are a lot of units, but Gimli has to get some assistance here. Gimli has leadership, by the way, in BFME 2, unlike in Rise of the Witch King. Builder has been taken down from the Dwarven player, best enemy. Man of Deal summon in order to kill the enemy heroes. You can also kill the enemy builder in those kind of situations. Gimli is still alive, though, which is nice. He's almost level 5. Again, that's gonna unlock the Slayer ability, guys. 15 power points collected, 925 command points available for best enemy. On the right side, the Warren player. On the other side, we have 600 command points available for Archangel, the Isengard player. 10 power points after Kribin, Industry, Devastation, and the Watcher. Gimli has to be careful, he's quite slow. Heal is on cooldown, keep that in mind, guys. Uh, luckily, he has some units around, but again, he has no mineshaft nearby. So I think Lord, uh, I think Lords can now come and cripple down this Gimli, no big deal. We have uh, Gloin back in the business, he's almost level 8. King Dane died unfortunately, but he was only level 1 anyway. There comes uh, Lords, level 7 has unlocked everything including pillage, which means even more resources from for killing enemy units or buildings later on when Lords is near nearby. Uh, Saruman is almost level 7 as well, level 8 is gonna unlock the Dominate, which can be used on the enemy units and they will be fighting for you for a short period of time. Which again, is a game-changing ability if you think about it, you know? It's like very impactful. If there is a massive army, you can use it on the half of the army and make them fight against each other pretty much. Look the money from Isengard. Even though he's low on command points, but he's getting money all the time from industry, devastation and now even the pillage ability from Lords. Look plus 4 for each kill on those Guardians. Um, the Dwarven player has to now make sure to actually make battle wagons, make even some siege weapons. Yes, uh, Siege Works level 3, guys. Has purchased the Mithril Mail already, by, by the way. You can also go for the Forge Blades. He already purchased this one as well. Uh, but nothing besides a normal infantry units. No Battle Wagons, no Extrovers, no Man of Tail from the Archer range. Gimli is level 5 now, so there is available, guys. The Mineshaft here is being the target from Isengard. There are still some Urukai. Look at the position from the Dwarven player. They are actually bad. Okay, level 5, Wormtongue, level 6, Saruman, and level almost 8, Lords. Gimli is around this side, he's healing up over time. Heal is back up, by the way, you can use it for Gimli to keep him alive. But he has to do something about these heroes now. The Undermine is coming in clutch though, to knock back the enemy units. But they are not taking too much damage, because they have leadership now. Now, Gimli is drawing his uh, axe and using the Slayer. Look at the damage he's now able to deal against Saruman, and he's faster than Saruman, you can't um, run away from him, oh but he got crippled down, that's a counter there, that's a counter there, in those kind of situations, Lord is so MVP, you know, if one of the heroes is popping off, you can always use the cripple ability and then he's gonna be locked down for a, for a long time actually, until Slayer goes on cooldown at least, and Slayer is gonna be the only possible way for uh, Gimli to chase or catch the enemy heroes. Okay, Gloin is level 9, that becomes scary actually, guys. Level 10, we know what's gonna happen. Level 10 unlocked, ladies and gentlemen. Do it. For death and glory. Gl you know, daddy of Gimli. Gimli-san. Come on, come on, do it. Chatterhammer is available, level 10. It's looking beyond standards, by the way, this ability. In BFME 2. 
can get closer and hit all the expansions and all the buildings around that at the same time. He's holding it for now. Remember, he is on cooldown, so he shouldn't take too much damage for no reason. He's also pushing from this side. I want to keep an eye on uh, Gloin. I don't want to miss the Shatter Armor, guys. Do it, Gimli. Do it, Gimli, son. I mean, not Gimli, Gloin. Gimli is daddy, of course. All right. We are waiting. We are waiting. Because Lourdes can now cripple him down, by the way. Like, he shouldn't wait too much. Uh oh, 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 boo, oh, no. He got interrupted. From Saramon, Saramon is like, you are not using anything now. He gets knocked back, dude. <laughs> he was already, you, you know, putting the hammer on the ground. Oh, yeah. Look at the animation, ladies and gentlemen. Where are the heroes? They got knocked back, I think. The commitment now against the fortress, boys. Gloin is gonna be in safety. Lourdes and Saramon are still alive. The heroes are not taking too much damage from Jetama, obviously. But the animation is looking nice. Now... The fortress is under attack from Isengard's player Archangel. Wormtong is almost level 6, that's gonna unlock the backstep. I'm actually curious to see how much damage this is gonna deal against heroes from the Dwarven player. Um, yeah, where is, where is Klein though? Klein can also use Shake Foundation. Ah, it's on cooldown. Uh oh. Okay. Now we have Urukai with Forge Bleeds and Heavy Armor, ladies and gentlemen, though. That's scary. That's really scary. 26 power points collected for the Isengard's player as well. Not only he will be able to protect the fortress, he was also able to kill Gimli. Shake Foundation is still on cooldown. If Shake Foundation would be available in this situation, I think it would be enough to burst down the fortress from this HP to zero. Plus 550 from the village of Lourdes for killing Gloin. And now we have the Dragon Strike available for Archangel. What a game, what a fiesta game again. 24 power points collected for best enemy. Undermine, uh, Man of Tail, uh, Hobbit Allies, Rallying Coal, Rebuild and Heal are his power points. He has full command points, still has a great amount of resource income. He's expanding even more at the bottom side. But the dragon is coming in ladies and gentlemen, look at this now. The level 3 mineshaft is the target first. Look at the animation of the fire, I like it so much. Look at these damages against the fortress. All the expansions are gone. They are still taking damage over time, but the dragon uh, won't actually kill too much. Like he killed what? One mineshaft level three. That's pretty much it. And one expansion around the fortress. Hmm. I mean, obviously, when you want to kill buildings, I think the best ability is the summoned dragon, in which you control the dragon after the summon. Because the dragon strike is nice if the layout is perfect for the dragon strike. You know. Like, for example, if every building is next to each other, you can use Dragon Strike and hit every single one of them at the same time. Okay, uh, level 8, Dominate is available. He's gonna use it now. And he's saying, fight for me. Okay, there we go. Uh, Earthquake was used. I missed this one. The Fortress is gone, guys, from uh, Archangel. It means he won't be able to use his abilities anymore. But luckily, he has a great amount of resource income. And even though he can't use his power points, the Undermine is coming in clutch once again. Uh, this is like not permanently, so the units are gonna be under control from best enemy very soon. The time remaining is going down. Men of the Ill Summon into the rebu into the rallying call. Darmon uh, is taking some damage, but I think he's gonna be okay. He should be just able to get away. Isengard is gonna be able to rebuild the fortress very very soon though. Look his money. Like he has great amount of resources, and the reason why he is still in the game, let's be honest, are definitely the heroes guys. Darmon, Lords, Warm Tongue. The trio of Isengard is doing a, are doing a great job. And I would like to see also Sharko maybe, you know? Sharko could also be nice to have him on the field. Alright, King Dean is back in the business. He's level 3. Level 4 is gonna unlock the Mighty Rage, which is, by the way, uh, one of the best debuffs slash buffs. You can use it for either way. Uh, you can use it on your own units to make them stronger. You can use it on the enemy units to make them weaker. With level uh, 7, you have you unlock the Stubborn Pride, which is going to give you Fear Resistant. And with level 8, you can get mounted and dismounted on your Battle Wagon or on this Goat. Uh, he's different, you can see already, uh, in compared to Rise of the Witch King. Level 8 is going to give him a lot of mobility, which he doesn't get in uh, Rise of the Witch King. And with level 10, you can summon the Royal Guard, which means you have like very strong units around you fighting for you. 
He's like a very sportive hero, definitely. Not the best hero for the 1v1 skirmishes, but that's fine. I mean, there are heroes like Lourdes with the Carnage or like Gimli with the Slayer. They are made to kill enemy heroes or to burst down enemy units. While heroes like King Dane, Gorkil the Goblin King are made to be a sportive hero for the army. Sport them either with leadership or to summon more units to fight for you. Level 5. He's gonna use the Mighty Reach now. That's the debuff, by the way, from Warm Tongue. He's also level 6. Backstab is available. He's gonna use it. It's not. He's not poisoned, right? Yeah, he's poisoned now. He's gonna take some damage over time. Uh, the furnaces are going down one by one. And I think if the Uruk Pit here falls, the game is gonna be over. Even though Isengard play has so much, so many command points. If you lose your last production building, you will lose the game. And I think that's the last production building from Archangel. He has a lot of money, but he is not being able to rebuild the fortress just yet. Now, yes, there we go. That's the reason why he's still alive. He was building another, another Uruk Pit. He has to. Because regardless how many power points or how many units you have on the field cans, if you lose your fortress and you lose your last production building, the buildings you are recruiting units from, you're gonna automatically lose the game in Bethany 2 or Rise of the Witch King. And that's the reason why he has to keep building more and more Uruk Pits. Potentially now go for the for the fortress again. He's building the fortress somewhere. Um, I'm not sure where he's building it. There we go. That's the site. Fortress is coming up for the Isengard play at the top right side. And uh, Lords is level 10. Warm Tongue is level almost 7. And also Saruman is almost level 9. Level 10 is gonna be a huge power spike with the Water of Power. I would love to see that. I know how already, uh, how already the Water of Power from Gandalf is looking like. But I have not seen it yet from uh, Saruman, the White. Luckily, King Dane was able to get away. Uh, I think Stabon Pride... You know, I don't think it's very effective in this matchup because there is no fear from Isengard. Uh, but being able to reveal the stealth units might be useful against something like uh, Warm Tongue's escape ability, you know? Because escape... Ah, okay, he can't even be attacked, alright? He get, becomes invisible and he can't even be attacked. So even if you can reveal him, you can't attack him. This is buffed, by the way, from the Dwarven Riches. Which means 350% more resource income, which is huge, by the way. Earthquake is on cooldown as well as the Dragon Strike. And again, when, you're, when your fortress is down, you can't use any of your power points, guys. But it's going to be up very, very soon once again for the Isengard's play Archangel. The heroes from Isengard are popping off this game, though. I like it. King Dane is moving forward, almost level 6. Uh, but he won't find anything around this side. Because the Isengard player is building his fortress around the top right side of the map. And he has to also react to this. Undermine is going to be used. Again, it's nice to disable the enemy units in those kind of situations. But it is not bursting them down. Especially not because of the leadership of Lords. I mean, actually, leadership from Lords doesn't give you armor. But those units, they have heavy armor purchase. You know, they are very, very tanky at this point of the game. The Dwarven heroes, the Dwarven fellowship... Uh, we have Gimli, King Dean, and also Glenn on the field. Chatterhammer is available, level 6 for Gimli, and level almost 6 for King Dean as well. Rallying code is being used. Gimli is giving you armor buff, by the way, 25% armor. That means it's, it, it is able to stack with the Rallying Call, because Rallying Call gives you only damage. The Uruk Pit is getting demolished. Furnaces are getting demolished as well. He doesn't want to give up too many power points or experience points, points in this case, to the heroes from the Dwarven player, which makes sense. Because if King Dean gets level 10, Royal Guard is going to be very impactful, definitely. Warm Tongue has to be careful. Oh, knockback on uh, King... Uh, not King. Gloin. Debuff is being used. Oh, oh, oh. He's going to use... Dominate. On the enemy units. Now they are fighting for Isengard, guys. It's now only the Dwarven heroes. They are left. Hobbit allies are here as well. King Dane has to be careful. Actually not, he was 1v1 in this Lord's no big deal. Level 7 Stubborn Pride is unlocked. They are still fighting for Isengard. And that's why Gimli has to disengage. Okay, it's a 3 versus 1 situation, it's not fair. 765 resources for killing King Zane because of the pillage from Lords. That's impressive. And I think Gloin also has been taken down. I can see Gloin. I can only see Gimli, guys. Yeah, Gloin has been taken down as well. Without being able to use the Shatterhammer, I believe. 
And yeah, because of the Fortress, he's now going to be able to use his power points once again. And he has a great amount of resource income still. Man of Steel is going to be used. Uh, killing some Lumber Mill workers. The Watcher is being used to counter that one. Every Man of Steel, almost every single Man of Steel is going to be taken down. And after the summon of the Watcher, he's going to deal damage around them. Look, he's eating some of these Man of Steel for dinner. Like yum, 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 delicious. Now, bringing food on the table. Man flash, as uh, Urukai would like to say. Yes, also the upgrade on the fortress for the lightning strike, which is nice. I like it. 650 command points available for Isengard. Look at his money. Like, he is getting so much money from Lourdes all alone, guys. The extra is not dealing too much damage to Lourdes. The Slayer is on cooldown. Gimli is quite slow. Fireball. No, it's the Wizard Blast this time. Fireball is on cooldown. And Saruman is almost level 10, ladies and gentlemen. That's gonna unlock the beautiful Ward of Power. During all this time, the Battle Wagon, the first Battle Wagon I was able to see so far in this game, has been taken down by the Urukai and the War Riders. Just like that. And, I mean, you have to agree with me, guys. The Isengard units are looking so nice and dope with the Forge Blades and the Heavy Armor purchased. Look how much money he's getting for killing the enemy units all the time. Especially the enemy heroes are giving you so much money. Like 700 something for killing King Zane and 500 something for killing Gimli and he was able to kill them multiple times already. He has a, uh, he has a couple of buildings around this side, Furnaces and the Uruk Pit, but he actually moved now with his main base to the top right side of the map. He has the Lightning Strike ability available but I think it's not going to be in the range to use around this side. Like every ability from the Fortress you know, like this one or the might Mighty Catapult from the Dwarven Faction, they have a limited range. So it's not like you can use it from this side of the map until this side of the map. I think the, the range is pretty much like the middle right there, you know? You can't use it any further. He's going for the Armory once again. Uh, okay, Gimli was actually able to survive. But Gimli is getting hard countered in those situations actually, guys. Because what happens is when, you, when Gimli uses the Slayer ability... Lourdes just uses Cripple and actually locks him down so he can't have any benefits from the movement speed when he can't move like 50% of nothing is also nothing you know so the increasement of the movement speed is kind of useless against Lourdes when he cripples you down that's why Gimli wasn't able to achieve too much just yet just because of Lourdes otherwise if Lourdes wouldn't be on the field I think Gimli would be easily able to kill Saruman and Wormtongue in a second Barrage is available now no it's freezing rain I take it back it has a different icon, I was confused. Undermine is being used once again, the animation is looking nice, but it deals like zero damage at this point. Wormtongue is here, but that's that's the thing, you know, he got crippled down once again, he's gonna be surrounded now, he can't either use the leap attack, nor is there any reason to use the Slayer. He's gonna try to get away now. Let's see, I mean, he has to use the Slayer to get away, definitely. Heal is being used, King Dane is here now, level 7, Devastation has been used once again. Oh, Wormtongue against Wormtongue against Gimli, that's a bad fight, but Archangel is paying attention. We don't want to fight against Gimli when he is level... Oh, the Shattered Armor is coming in clutch! Oh, this guy is angry now, Gloin, what are you doing, bro? Alright, uh, but Gimli has been taken down, though. Gimli has been taken down. I would love to see him level 10 as well, but I think we're gonna see first Saruman level 10, which is nice. We can use Wizard Blast here and get some more power points and experience. But look how much damage he's taking from King Zane, guys. Holy Quacamole, level 10 unlocked. All right, we already know what it means. Saruman, don't die. Ooh, look at this ability, the War of Power. Uh, it looks nice. With the, it's like the Lightning Strike, but it is in a, in a big area, in a big circle around Saruman and killing just like the War of Power from guns of all the units around him. Level 10. But, it, you know, he can't match this army now. There are too many units with upgrades. And what a game, guys. Best enemy is going to give up the game. He knows he has no more chance to win this one. What a performance. Was looking bad for Dwarves at some point. He was down to 200 command points. He lost the fortress as well. But the heroes from Isengard were able to save the day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe as well. i see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace, guys.